It was a sleepless night for Jigo Mayor Rudy Matsunani. I thought that uh, Typhoon uh, Dolphin was going to be friendly, but it ain't. Got some strong winds. That's because his northern village felt the brunt of Typhoon Dolphin's blow. According to warning coordination meteorologist Chip Gard, preliminary data recorded winds at 106 miles per hour at Anderson Air Force Base, 85 miles per hour near the airport, and 70 to 75 miles per hour at Naval Station down in Santa Rita. Last night, uh, the small eye that we had heading toward us expanded and uh, forced the eye wall cloud down over the northern part of Guam. This is actually a good lesson on why we tell you what we expect and then we tell you to plan for one category higher, okay? And people planned for that and so they were ready and we had to uh, they had to make some quick actions, but they were able to do that. It was a lesson resident Larry Titano learned the hard way. I was complacent, and that's my fault. I mean, for 13 years, we didn't, you know, we just took it for granted. And then just, just one time, it, it, you know, things just happened. It is not as bad as 13 years ago. Uh, Pongstone was, uh, was worse. This is, uh, makes, makes, you know, trees and bananas and, uh, at least the roof didn't blow off on one of the houses. So this, this is a lot better than before. But we didn't, we didn't expect it to be this bad. On Saturday morning, Titano required the assistance of a backhoe and Jigo Mayor Matinani's staff to move heavy debris that blocked access to a multi-family ranch. Titano says his family wasn't prepared and reports 24 casualties at his Jigo home. 24 egg-laying chickens, that is. This in addition to a number of fallen fruit trees. It's devastated. I mean, I lost all my chickens um, to the typhoon. But we lost most of our mango trees, a lot of our banana trees, uh, some herbal plants that we planted years ago. Uh, we have one mango tree that's left. So I guess this is, it's a way to start over again after all these years. While recovery efforts begin at the Titano compound, residents can also expect to see new faces making assessments island-wide too. Federal Emergency Management Agency, or FEMA, has had a 40-member team on island since before Typhoon Dolphin's landfall and have many more on standby in Honolulu, now en route to Guam. Senior federal official Deanne Criswell. There has not been a disaster declaration yet, um, but we will have teams out in the field. There's also non-governmental agencies like the Red Cross as well as uh, Guam's readiness programs that will be able to help citizens as soon as they need it. It's not just FEMA. We have brought in other federal resources, other federal partners to assist in this and those that we knew would be needed right away, like the Army Corps of Engineers that has been assisting with some of the generator issues that have been experienced here, Health and Human Services in case we had any medical needs. But it's not just FEMA you may see out and about. Governor Eddie Calvo and Lieutenant Governor Ray Tenorio made preliminary assessments of the island early Saturday morning. I can't uh, say enough good things about all the emergency responders, all the people who have been working uh, through the night. Uh, everyone, everything from private uh, vendors, whether it be telecommunications or data providers, that really helped us. And telecommunications was a game changer through Typhoon Dolphin. As Tenorio tells KUAM, thanks to social media and instant messaging, the Joint Information Center and emergency responders could get data faster, like power and water outages and fall and debris. Without that data sometimes it becomes very difficult for us to be able to figure out what's going on. So we got, you know, when somebody lost power in the Santa Hania, we got a WhatsApp notice and we got uh, an issue at the Guam Memorial Hospital, we got a WhatsApp notice. And so these things really helped us a lot to see how the team was working and we have a fantastic uh, government as well as a private sector team. In the event another system develops and threatens the island, residents like Titano promise to be ready. We have to have a family SOP to uh, hey, if it's condition three, we're not gonna take it for granted anymore. We we shut her up. We we bring the animals in. Uh, we don't take it. You know, we don't assume that's gonna go to uh, Saipan, like we were told. And you know, next time we'll be ready.